Hello everybody, it's Foo here, back with another Overlooked Buff video, and following my previous festive upload, we're keeping it a seasonal with this video all about the season's Pokemon, Swordsbuck. This Pokemon has some really nice mechanics to play around with, and I can't wait to show you this old dear's new tricks. As always, if you like my content, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, and if you want to see more, you can give yourself a late Christmas present by pressing that subscribe button. First, let's consider what Sourcebook did before Generation 7. It was introduced in Generation 5 with the unique normal grass typing which is actually really nice. It doesn't do much defensively, but it adds another stab typing which complements grass really nicely. It means that you can hit most things for neutral damage with your normal type moves, and then the rock types you can hit for super effective damage with the grass types, and it's got some neat coverage moves too. Its stats are all right, it's got decent speed and a usable attack stat, although it has got only mediocre bulk. For a time, it had a signature move in Hornleech, which is a really, really nice move. It's basically a physical grass draining move. We've got a ton of special ones, but it's nice to have some physical ones too, and Hornleech is a really, really great move for this Pokemon. Other notable moves are Return or Double Edge for some really powerful stab normal type moves, and then you've got Jump Kick giving it near perfect coverage, and importantly, it has Swords Dance as well to boost its attack stat. Its abilities are really cool too, it's got a nice choice of different things to run, so it's got Sap Zipper which gives it an immunity and an attack boost if it does get hit by that grass type move, and this is mainly used on Substitute and Swords Dance sets. You've also got Chlorophyll which completely changes its mode and allows it to be a Sun Sweeper which is very viable with either Choice Band or Swords Dance and that was probably the most common and viable use for Swordsbuck previously. And then its final ability is Serene Grace, which is usually a fantastic ability on any other Pokemon, but Swordsbuck never really had the move pool to abuse it. But more importantly than all that, it had a really cool little mechanic that it could change all of its seasonal forms. And unfortunately, in Generation 7, obviously because seasons aren't a thing in the game, this doesn't happen anymore, which is a bit annoying. And generally, you only see the spring form. But if you import the other forms from previous games, then you can get them locked into that form instead. I personally really like the autumn and winter forms, but let me know in the comment section which ones are your favourite. Anyways, let's get on to the buffs, that's why you're here. So first, the most notable one that you may well have already heard of is that it now gets access to Headbutt, which is really pretty nice because it's a stab normal type move. It's got more powerful normal type moves, but what Headbutt has is that chance to flinch the opponent, and it's actually a 30% chance to flinch the opponent, which you can then eventually have something to combine with that Serene Grace ability, giving you a 60% chance to flinch the opponent, which is really high and really quite disgusting, but actually, it, it's it's pretty impressive. It means that Swordsbuck is now a much more viable Choice Scarf user, because at the end of the game, it's pretty much always a win condition. You can potentially flinch your opponent down with that headbutt, and it also has the Thunder Wave, um, which is a really reliable way to paralyze your opponent compared to other grass types that have the Stun Spore, which doesn't hit grass types, and it means that you uh, it's only 75% accuracy, which isn't great. Thunder Wave is a bit more reliable, so you can then try for some Power Flinch shenanigans. So yeah, it's pretty lethal. It's it's a bit disgusting, but it does work, and if you're a fan of Souls Book and you want to see it do some cool new things, this is probably the one you want to check out. The second buff is that Swordsbuck now gets access to Stomping Tantrum, giving it some ground type coverage that it sorely missed, because though it does have the fighting type coverage and jump kick, which is powerful and it's really good, it allows it to hit the rock and the steel types, you still really struggle with poison types, and you also have to be really careful if the opponent has a ghost type and is going to predict you. You don't want to be taking all that recoil damage. Stomping Tantrum's much more reliable, and actually we already have a gauge on how useful it will be, because back in Generation 5, Nature Power on Wi-Fi battles always turned into Earthquake, which was very, very scary and really hard to switch in on. Swordsbuck was a huge threat back then, and I really think that the ground, ground coverage will be very helpful for this Pokemon. Will we see it over Jump Kick? Well, it very much depends on what you need your Swordsbuck to break through, um, but I do think that it just gives it a few more options and it's a bit more reliable than Jump Kick. 
The third buff we're going to consider now is Z moves and Swordsbuck actually doesn't have too many useful status Z moves that give it something that it can't already do because it's already got great setup moves in Swords Dance and Agility. Although you can try a weird Z Grass Whistle set because though Grass Whistle is inaccurate, what this does is it boosts your speed by stage and potentially puts the opponent to sleep, giving you a free turn to set up a Sword Dance too. So it's a way of doing a double dance a bit more safely but I say safely definitely in quotation marks because you if you you're very unlikely to hit that grass whistle basically it's very very risky but if it's high risk high reward because if it works you are very much ready to sweep however that's more of a gimmick the the set that I really wanted to talk about is Sourcebook's most common set nowadays which is just a normalium z double edge set and why this is great is that it breaks through so many things a lot of bulky grass types think that they can take on a swords dance swords buck but with that breakneck blitz coming off double edge's huge base power you can blow past most things that would usually be able to take this pokemon on and what's really nice and why it really is effective is that obviously double edge causes recoil usually but when you turn it into a z move you're not getting that recoil Recall either, allowing Swordsbuck a lot more longevity and really just giving it the ability to blast past a few extra Pokemon and uh, it's just really good. Obviously there's Horn Leech there as well so when you get that boost if you can take something out with Horn Leech you're going to get all the recovery as well and then you've got your choice of coverage move in Jump Kick or Stomping Tantrum and I think that's really good so I just thought it would be worth noting that Swordsbuck's current best set is probably a Z move set and therefore this is is quite a big buff for this Pokemon. And the fourth and final buff is a bit of a tangential one, which is really cool and I know that you guys like your gimmicks, so I definitely have to give this a shout out because not many Pokemon can boast this really cool little mechanic. And it's actually the presence of Tapu Bulu and Grassy Terrain through the Grassy Surge ability and also the um, Terrain Extender item allowing Grassy Terrain to be around for longer. This is because in Grassy Terrain, Swordsbuck's secret power has a 30% chance to put the opponent to sleep. Now obviously you can then combine this with Swordsbuck's Serene Grace ability, meaning that you have a 60% chance to put the opponent to sleep with a stab base 70 power move, meaning that you're still dealing decent damage to them and putting them to sleep. And we're talking about a Pokemon who can then boost up with Swords Dance once your opponent is asleep. So this is actually really cool. And not only that, obviously you still get all of the usual benefits from grassy terrain, things like the passive recovery and Swordsbuck is a grass type, so you always have that massive 1.5 times boost to your Horn Leech damage as well. So you've got this one move that puts the opponent to sleep 60% of the time, and then your other move, which is an extremely powerful Horn Leech, which is going to drain you back loads of, eight, uh, loads of recovery. Now this set is not new to Generation 7, but you had to have a separate Pokemon setting up Grassy Terrain, which would only last an extra four turns after you've switched into Swordsbuck, and it really wasn't that big a deal. But now, because you've got the Terrain Extender, meaning that you can set it up and then switch into Swordsbuck and still have tons of time to play with, and you've got the automatic setup of Tapu Bulu, it makes this set a lot more viable, potentially even better in the doubles format, you could have a Choice Scarf Swordsbuck paired with a Tapu Bulu, meaning that you can put things to sleep and Tapu Bulu can like hammer away at your opponents. There's just a lot more scope for you to use this set. I, I think it's just worth pointing out because I don't think a lot of people are aware of the fact that Secret Power puts things to sleep with 60% likeliness and that is just so cool. So I definitely wanted to shout out this gimmick set because I know you guys would be up for it. But that's gonna be all for today and all in all, Swordsbuck now has a ton more options. It's a really, really versatile Pokemon. You can go from Sunsweeper to Swords Dance Threat to Budget Paraflinch Jirachi to a Grassy Terrain Giant. All of that in one Pokemon, which I just think is so cool. If you want an offensive grass type, maybe try this dearest of deers. Let me know which set you like the best and if you've had any success using Swordsbook. I'd also be interested to know which form is your favourite, so let me know in the comment section. But that is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribing and dinging the notification bell too. But all that's left to be said is I've been Fufu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.